Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the TOLIS Airbus A321 and today we're going to look at using Final App to fly a VOR approach. So a fully managed VOR approach is another way to refer to it. I am a real world Airbus pilot, hopefully this can give some more perspective on your home simulations and how we use the airplane in real life. Obviously it's not for any real world use and it doesn't show any actual airline procedures, it's just uh, an idea of how we might use the airplane. And there are some differences between the, the simulator and uh, real life which I'll talk about as we go along. We're going to be in Toulouse again uh, and the uh, VOR for runway 32 right. So exactly as we did last time using track FPA, which I'll provide a link to, uh, where I talked about using those basic modes, selected modes, as we talk about them on the Airbus. And this time we'll use managed modes, which will mean using final app. So let's have a look. So here we are in the hold at a demo, ready for the VOR 32 right, as you can see here. I pretty much set up the airplane, but let's go through it again. If you need help with the FMGC setup, I've got a video on that, which I'll provide a link to. I'm going to bring up the chart just to make it a bit easier to see. And here's our navigation display. Put it into plan mode and constraints. And let's do our little hat. So our little pattern like that, which is in my tutorial video. So from a demo, we're going to leave, fly course 266 out to Tango Square Co. Tango Square Co NDB, and then from there we can descend to 3,000 feet, so 4,000 feet to Tango Square Co, 3,000 feet, and then we can set the final approach track, which I can see here. And that's here. So this is so far, we're just checking it very similar to how we did our final app, uh, our VOR track and FPA approach. So what's different about final app? Well, final app means we're going to use the airplane's coding to fly the approach with the VOR just as a backup. Whereas when we did track FPA, we were navigating using the VOR primarily. Now, don't make any mistake, the VOR is still our primary navigation aid. It must be serviceable, we must be using it, but we are effectively going to monitor it while the airplane flies its approach from this database. So what is important now then? Well, it means that this database needs to be accurate, so we have to check it very carefully. So how do we do that? Well, let's get to our final approach section, which is here, and I'll bring up the VOR chart. So from our CD at 15.7, uh, and then we go to our FD32 right, which is there, FD32 right. So that is our final descent point. From there, I need to check the track and I need to check the uh, angle. So the track 321 and it's 322 here. So it's one degree out. That's acceptable. It can be up to three degrees out for a radio navigate approach. This is different from RNAV. Don't confuse the two. It's, it's very easy to. So because we are still primarily using a VOR, one degree difference is okay. So 3 to 1 is fine. We would also check the angle, and this is where in the real airplane I would expect to see a little angle, a minus 3.0 degrees, because it's a 3 degree descent, as we can see here. Unfortunately, I don't have that, uh, which I think is part of the coding in the TOLIS. Uh, I believe they're still working on some of the vertical aspects. So that's not displayed at the moment. So this is a little bit of a difference in the real airplane. I can see final descent point 3 to right, FD 3 to right, 3,000 feet. So I know that that is where we should start our descent from 3,000 feet. Uh, and then at 8.0 VO2, which is there and there, we should be 15.10, 15.10. So the coding's correct, and it takes us down towards the threshold. In some airplanes, we can use the autopilot until almost 250 feet, but I'll talk about that later. So the coding looks good, uh, as best we can check it. We also need to check the go-around, just as we always would. So out to lose left 304, left 251. I have a video on go arounds if you need help with that as well and that's still it to hold. Something to note here uh, is this altitude is the airplane using the information inside the airplane. It's not basing that on anything outside like an ILS. As a result, we need to be really careful we have the correct Q&H because if we have the wrong Q&H in here, then the airplane will think it's at the right altitude, but actually it'll be at the wrong altitude. And I'll show you, uh, we'll fly this approach, and then I'll show another approach where uh, I can demonstrate that. And that's very dangerous, uh, really important to have the right Q&H. So how do we know we have the right Q&H? Well, the biggest clue is going to be the radio altimeter for us. We're going to really want to check that it comes alive when we expect. So the elevation of Toulouse uh, Airport it's about 18 hectopascals, so it's about 500 feet, 499 feet. So there it is. It's an easy way to check it. So the radio altimeter should turn on around 2,500 feet on my display above the ground, which means at 3,000 feet QNH, I'd expect the radio altimeter to come alive somewhere around 3,000 feet. 
If it comes on earlier, then I'll know I'm too low. If it comes on later, then I'm too high. You have to account for terrain, because sometimes if there's a hill here, it could come on earlier. But anyway, that's going to be one big check. Uh, and also, obviously, we'd uh, be very careful with the um, airport information, the weather you've downloaded, and you confirm it with air traffic control before you flew this approach. But there we go, 1012. Uh, so that is, as you can see, what we've got set. Okay, so that's the coding checked. Radio navigation aids. As you can see, I've manually tuned it. So if I delete that out, ba -ba -ba, that is probably what you'll see and maybe no course. If you type it in, Tango Oscar Uniform, it just appear big. So in real life, we would probably tune it ourselves in both sides to make sure you've both got the correct VOR and that course bar. If I go to VOR on here, there's that course bar. To be honest, we're not going to use it. I'm going to fly this in arc mode, but I have got my needle displayed. As you can see, I've got it set here to VOR1 vr one there. That's what I need really. I can also put in the Tango Oscar Echo into ADF2 and then I can display that there, Tango Oscar Echo ADF2. This RS frequency is tuned but I wouldn't expect it to be in real life uh, so I've turned off glide slope mode here. In real airplane we wouldn't have to do that. Um, I don't want it to give me glide slope warnings uh, and so on if it, it it's in the background and we're not using it. Progress page as usual for these setups uh, I've typed in the threshold LFBO32 right into here which gives me my distance. So this is the important difference with VORs, uh, as we saw in track and FPA. The VOR is past the runway. So this distance here, 30 miles to the VOR, but I'm only 26 miles to the runway. So I'm closer to the runway. So don't rely on this as a countdown to landing. You're actually a bit closer. Uh, so that's why this page is useful. The next step is, as I said, we're using the aeroplane to navigate. We're not using uh, the external sources as much. They're there and there are back, there are, I say backup, that we've got to monitor them but uh, we need the airplane to know what it's doing. So I need accuracy to be high. And if it goes below high, I will have to convert to a track and FPA, which I could do and I'll talk about later. So a lot of airlines will ask you to have GPS primary as well to use Final App and at least one of the uh, MCDUs. So we've got GPS primary here, so that's fine. But this accuracy needs to be high because it the, means the airplane knows where it is uh, and can fly this approach like that. And we're gonna back it up with the VOR needles. Performance, exactly as before. Uh, I've loaded in the weather, a bit of a tailwind. Minima, 980. So all as sort of standard for a config full landing. And there's the go around. Fuel, I've got a bit of extra fuel loaded in. We've got uh, 3.2 tons at the moment. Secondary, it's just a copy of the active. So that's the MCDU hat loaded up for the approach. So how are we going to fly this approach? Well, the magic of a final app approach is that we can actually descend and configure because the airplane has this three degree profile loaded into its uh, MCDU. So unlike track FPA, where we fully configured as we started down the approach, I'm going to let the airplane start down the approach. I think I'll just be uh, flap one. And as soon as I pass 12.7 from the VOR, I'm going to go to flap two, gear down, flap three, flap full. Uh, and I can do that as I come down because the, although the airplane will balloon, it will correct back onto this profile it has loaded. So it will actually, a bit like a glide slope, try and get back to it. So it's like a glide slope, but remember, if the QNH is wrong, it will be a wrong glide slope. Really important. I'm going to have a check of these altitudes as we go to make sure that it's doing something sensible. Uh, and then I need to be visual by my uh, 980. MSA 3000 feet, so uh, we'll be flying this procedurally until... Um, we go below it and we'll be on the procedure for that. Great, so let's go and have a look at it. Okay, so now we're leaving the hold at a demo and we look on our chart. From here, I can descend to 4,000 feet towards the Tango Oscar Echo. So let's descend to 4,000 feet. And I'll do that in vertical speeds. Do, do, do. speed vertical speed something else that needs to be done before we can arm the approach in the mcdu you need to have the correct waypoint as the two waypoint so the two waypoint is the, the next waypoint loaded if i press flight plan it's the one in white it's usually in the second line like that uh, and i can also see it up here tango oscar echo so i need to have that as the two waypoint to be the descent point easier to see in real life because there'll be the little minus three degrees as I said or whichever angle your approach is here we don't have it yet but for now I can I know it's the FD32 right from 3,000 feet so once I'm going towards that waypoint I can press the approach push button 
To make that work, I also need the approach to be active. Now, it'll activate automatically passing the descent point, but I'm going to do it early. I don't want to wait just in case it does it. I want it done now. So I'm going to activate the approach phase. And now we get this vertical deviation scale on here, which is exactly what we want. Now I can go to manage speed because I know that the airplane will uh, go to our normal configuring speed. So we'll go to green dot and then F, uh, S and F speed as I configure automatically, which is great. So here we go, 4,000 feet. After Tango Oscar Echo, I can descend to 3,000. If we accidentally have the LS push button up, which we would use for the uh, landing uh, RS, you'll see it flashes VDEV in amber because it wants to show me the VDEV scale, but I blocked it out with this RS, which I'm not using. So it's very important you don't have that selected by accident. Uh, so there we go. So if I look at my plan, at my flight plan, I'm going to arm the approach after the CD32 right and when I'm going towards FD32 right. The reason is I don't want to arm it until I'm ready to fly it. So uh, as I can see, it's above me at the moment. If it was sort of half above me, the airplane might capture it and climb up to it or something like that. So it's best to wait until you know you want to descend and it'll be in front of you. So let's carry on. So we're past the Tango Oscar Echo. We can see this bar has gone below us. Uh, it doesn't matter. I want to go down to 3,000 feet because I know that's the procedure here. 3,000 feet is our platform altitude. So there's speed, vertical speed. And you can see I put up flap one, so the airplane is now flying S speed. I can let the airplane intercept in nav because I'm going to use effectively nav mode once I'm on final approach anyway. But it's important I have this VOR, the Tango Oscar Uniform, identified and working. If it stops working, I have to go around or I can't fly this approach. If the airplane starts navigating poorly, so it, it goes off the green line or we're not happy, or this goes from high to low, so you can see it now requires 0.3 nautical miles for this approach, and it's actually even more accurate at 0.05, so it's very accurate. If we were to lose this accuracy, then I could convert to track FPA and fly it uh, as we did earlier in the other video uh, using my selected modes and the chart and the VOR needle. But for now, it's all working, so we're going to use final app. Let's bring up the chart so we can check our attitude. So as we said, FD3 to right, we're going to start our descent from 3,000 feet. And I'm going to be probably just about starting to configure at that point. So we're turning on to final approach now. Our radio altimeter came alive at 3,000 feet. So that's as we said, 2,500 feet, 3,000 feet. So it's pretty close. Uh, so that suggests our QNH is right. We can see it's getting a bit lower. Uh, that's probably because of a hill beneath us. And now it's increasing again. So you do have to be a little bit aware of the terrain. And I can see some green terrain beneath us here. So the two-way point is now FD3 to right. It's become my two-way point up here. So I can arm approach. And on the PFD, it's gone to final lap straight away. It could have armed it in blue until it was happy, uh, but as it's to the two-way point and the bar is already there, it's armed. This little magenta bar, don't worry if it's above you, because it could descend on a three-degree glide slope until it meets you at your descent point and then descend from there. In the real airplane, I'd also expect a blue down arrow at the descent point, so you can see when it's going to descend. That doesn't seem to be coded in here just yet. So it's all looking as expected. I'm going to go to flap two. I think I'll go to flap two now. Let the speed start coming back. So there's flap two. We should descend at this point from 3000. And there it goes, starts down. In terms of altitude checks, 12 miles from the VOR, I should be at 2780. We're at 12.2, 12 miles. 2800 so a tiny bit high within 10 20 feet so i'll leave that for now it looks pretty accurate again only if the qnh is correct let's put the gear down and start configuring and as you see the rate of descent reduces as i put up the flaps and the airplane starts to balloon a little bit let's go flap full but then it will correct back onto this profile so this is why we can configure as we come down the glide slope. It's not a glide slope, but the vertical profile. We can configure as we descend on it because the airplane corrects for us. It's really, really good. I can only use one autopilot. If I swap over the autopilot, ah, well, in the real airplane, you can't use two for a final lap approach. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that to arm. 
And here we go. We're now coming out visual with the runway, which is excellent. Checking our points. So next waypoint, 9 miles, 1830. We can see we're visual as well, so it looks like it's working out. So when do we get rid of the autopilot? Well, that depends on the coding of the airplane. Some airplanes, you can use the autopilot all the way down to uh, 250 feet above the ground. It does depend on the airplane and the coding and which airport you're in. Those ones need the missed approach point to be on the threshold, basically. For us today, uh, I'm going to use it down to uh, basically to minima and then disconnect. If I'm not using the flight directors, I can convert it to track an FPA and turn off the flight directors. In some airports uh, and, and airplanes, you could do it um, down to, like I say, 250 feet above the runway. And it, it is possible, depending on the coding and your Airbus, to use it uh, in final app all the way down to the touchdown, although you have to disconnect the autopilot at 250 feet. But I've tried it already in this, and it's not quite coded for that, so we can't do that. So I'm going to disconnect it uh, shortly after going visual, and certainly by 400 feet. So looking good, two whites, two reds, uh, our minima of 980, altitudes have all been good. So I'm going to say that I'm visual now, let's autopilot off, um, I'm not going to use the flight directors, so I'm going to turn them off, flight directors off, bird on, and runway track of 322 is set. Now just as we did last time, I'm going to gently keep my rate and, uh, datum rate of descent, and move myself over gently to the centre line, small corrections this close in. And there we go. So the last bit very similar to a track FBA, but you have to remember you turn off the flight directors and you need to turn the bird on because uh, obviously you're in heading vertical speed still. And there we go, bring it to a stop. As I said, this is not the only way, uh, but this is a, a typical way, but it doesn't represent any airline actual procedures. So let's go and have a look at some of the errors that could catch us out flying one of these, these approaches. Okay, so here we are back in the same position, about to leave the hold at a demo and head out for our VOR. And I want to talk about something slightly different and things that can go wrong. So first of all, the Q&H must be right, and I'll show you why. We're using our vertical guidance and that amber VDEV scale, uh, but it's basing it on the Q&H we've got set. So if I accidentally have 1022 set, a higher Q&H, I will think I'm at 5,300 feet now, and I'll descend to 5,000 feet. So 300 feet difference. And as we can see, if I was actually at 5,000 feet on this Q&H, but the Q&H side is 1012, I'd be 300 feet lower than I am now, so I'd be at uh, 4,700 feet. And that would be true for the whole approach. So I could be 300 feet low for the whole approach, which is obviously incredibly dangerous. So very important you have the correct Q&H set and checked. And we're going to back that up with the radio altimeter. So as I said, 500 feet elevation in Toulouse. Uh, so I'm expecting to rain around 3,000 feet. Uh, on the Q&H, I'm expecting the radio altimeter to then come alive because it first displays at 2,500 feet. Hopefully that's uh, that's uh, clear. Next, um, descent point. On an approach like this, on a non-precision approach, you cannot fly direct to your final approach fix. 
12.7 miles. So if we look on here and go to plan, let's say we were being uh, radar vectored. So I'm going to pretend that traffic control is giving me a vector of 27, let's go 275 and pull. So now we're on heading 275. So if you're vectoring yourself or whatever um, to get yourself onto this approach, you cannot go direct to the FD32 right. If we did, the airplane would fly there and then it will start turning slightly early to get itself intercepting onto this final approach track. And as it turns, it's also going to start descending. So it's not safe because we're not established on that track before we start our descent uh, for procedural reasons, terrain reasons, that sort of thing. So we have to go, if I want to go direct to a waypoint, I can go direct to this waypoint because then I'll be on that final track uh, in time for the approach. So let's do that now. Direct to CD32 right, not FD. CD. And there we go. Now I can see I will be on the right track. So that's acceptable, but obviously terrain clearance and so on, you've got to be aware of yourself. So I know I can go to 4,000 feet from when I leave the hold, so let's do that. There is another way of doing this, which I'll show you in arc mode. Uh, let's say we were using headings. So if I go back to headings, like that. Um, and there was, let's say there wasn't this convenient waypoint here. Let's say it was in a different position. I could go to my direct to page, select the waypoint that I want to uh, be established on the track. So that at the latest I could use the final approach fix. So I'm going to put it there, but I'm not going direct there. I'm not just going to go direct like that. That's no good because as I said, it will start descending early or whilst it's still turning. But I can do a radial in which will just draw out in the opposite direction. So I need to put in the reciprocal of 322. So that's 142, 142, which, so you just do 322 minus 180. And that radial in, and now we can see it draws a line in the opposite direction out from that waypoint. So now I can press insert. And what it does is on our PFD, it arms nav mode. So I, didn't, I don't want that yet. I'm gonna clear that, so we're in heading. And you can see it's drawn that line out. And I can get myself onto that line and then descend from the descent point. So either direct to the point before or you could do this. But you've got to be on that track earlier than the descent point uh, or the final approach fix officially. Um, it could be about two miles before. You want recommended you know, a, a few miles to, to be fully established. So let's get ready for the approach. Activate the approach just as we did earlier. And start configuring. Manage speeds. Get down to 3,000 feet. Um, there is a difference between the final descent point, which is where the Airbus will start its descent, and the final approach fix, but it's a little hard to talk about because we can't see the angle. Um, the descent point is where the airplane has that first angle. It may not be the same as the official final approach fix, but in this case it is. Uh, it's a, a little bit hard to talk about until we can see those angles, uh, so hopefully that gets updated in the future. So how do I now establish inbound on that track? Well, as I had it earlier, I can just push one dot on the heading bug um, and then it arms. And we can see here, we get nav mode. And on here, if we zoom in, we can see it's going to fly us. And then we'll be nicely intercepted on the track towards our descent point. I could also arm approach, although I might wait until I'm established inbound. But the two waypoint is already FD32 right. So if I press that now, we get final blue, it's armed, and uh, I'm not sure why it's lost nav and gone into heading. There we go, app nav, speed out star, and then final is blue. So final is our descent mode, and that is ready. Here's 3,000 feet, and we've got 2,200. We're expecting it at 2,500, so that suggests there's some terrain out here, or we've got it wrong, uh, but we can see there is some terrain beneath us, uh, and as we go over that, we'll, it should uh, match up to what we expected. And now as we go to flap two, I can see that it should descend here. And as I said, there would be that uh, normal arrow. If we were on the wrong Q&H, we would think we're high. So we would have descended further to get to uh, 3,000 feet or what we thought was 3,000 feet. But we'd actually be low. But the computer would still start its descent here because it would it would not know the difference. And you'd start your descent early. Uh, oh, sorry, not early. You'd just start your descent from the wrong altitude. 
and carry on at three degrees. So yeah, very dangerous. So here we are now descending in final lap. And like I said, there's still this terrain. And this is the problem with relying entirely on the radio altimeter to judge your altitude over the ground. If there is terrain underneath you, this sort of thing can happen where you end up um, with a slight discrepancy. So you can see it's about, we're expecting this to show 3,000 feet, 2,500 feet in here. So 3,000 feet here, 2,500. So at 2,500 feet altitude, I'm expecting 2,000 feet. And you can see, because it's got terrain beneath us, it's already slightly lower. Um, but as we carry on, that should even out. So you really need to check your Q&H as well. Air traffic will clarify the Q&H with you before you begin this sort of approach. Let's finish configuring. Rest of the flat. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is, what if we leave the automatics in? So if I leave it in final lap with the autopilot, what will happen? Well, eventually, uh, somewhere around 400 feet, it would probably drop out and it will revert to heading vertical speed, which isn't giving us any useful information or guidance anymore. Uh, it's just left over from whatever it was doing last. Like I said, in modern Airbuses, it's often set up so that you could carry on and it would only revert to heading and vertical speed, probably uh, crossing the runway threshold, but that depends on the airport and the airplane. But I know on this one, it's going to revert early. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm going to just leave all the automatics in. Uh, and we'll see what happens as we reach uh, about 400 feet. So here we go. Uh, at some point approaching minimum or uh, just after minimum, I would pr take out the autopilot, turn off the flight directors and bring the bird up, which is our track FPA marker, and set the inbound runway track. But I won't do that now. So here's our minimum. Yeah, we're visual, we're carrying on, but we forget to do anything. And let's have a look at what happens. And there it goes, autopilot drops out, and we go to vertical speed and heading. They're not useful, they're not doing anything now, uh, so certainly flight director's off, bird on, manually fly the airplane over for our landing. And here we are on the ground again. The final lap approaches do have lots of uh, gotchas to them. So you do need to be careful with what you're doing. Hopefully we've covered um, some clear ones for you today. In particular, setting the right Q&H and checking the coding and monitoring it properly as you fly down the approach to make sure it's doing what you expect. All really important not to just sit back and relax because it is not an ILS, uh, it is not using external sources, so you could be very careful with that. They're different from RNAVs, so I'll have a look at RNAV approaches in another video, uh, but hopefully this made sense for you today. As always, there'll be more videos to come. Thank you uh, very much for watching and the video suggestions and the helps and tips I get from the comments. So uh, do please keep it coming and uh, we'll continue to hopefully get the content that you guys uh, would like to see. Thank you very much and see you in another video soon.